Hello, I'm Edward Tart, a math teacher. This is another in my series of math videos where I teach a short math lesson and then give you a challenge based on the lesson. This lesson is a comparison of two graphs. Each has an equation. The first one has as its equation y equals 1 over x. I will be drawing a portion of that graph. This is the x-axis this is the y-axis. When x is 1 in this equation, y is 1 over 1, which is 1. And so we have the xy pair 1, 1. That means I go over 1 and up 1, and I mark that point. Right there. Next, when x is 2, y is 1 over 2, which is 1 half. And so I go over 2 and up 1 half. And I mark that point. <clears throat> That's there. When x is 3, y is 1 third. And so I go over 3, up 1 third. Not as far as going up a half. That's that point. And when x is 4, y is 1 fourth. So I go over 4, up 1 fourth. Again, not quite as far as going up 1 third. So I have these four points, each going up not as far as the previous. I am now going to connect them. The connection forms a curve. There's the curve. It gets lower and lower as it goes out to the right, but it will never get as low as the x-axis because I will always go up one over something, a tiny fraction out here, one-fifth, one-sixth, one-seventh, one-eighth, one-ninth. Eventually, way out to the right, I will go, go up only a millionth. That is a tiny microscopic length, but it's still up a little bit. And so, as I say, this graph will never touch the x-axis. We are now going to look at an area, the area bounded by this vertical line at 1. The graph itself is the upper boundary, the x-axis as the lower boundary, but having no boundary out to the right. I will shade that area. That's the area I'm talking about. Now we're going to compare this with a second graph where the equation is a bit different from this one. This one was y equals 1 over x. The second one is y equals 1 over x squared. That means 1 over x times x. When x is 1, y is 1 over 1 times 1, which is still 1. That gives us the xy pair 1, 1, which was the same as in the other graph. I mark, I mark that with a point. <clears throat> that was the same, but from here on it's different. When x is 2, y is 1 over 2 times 2, which is 4, 1 fourth. So I go over 2, and instead of going up 1 half, I go up not as far, only 1 fourth. That's that point. When x is 3, I go up only one-ninth instead of one-third, because three times three is nine. That's that point. And when x is four, y is not one-fourth, it's only one-sixteenth. That's very close to the x-axis, but still above it. And so we have these points. I'm going to connect them with the curve, as I did in the other situation.
there's the curve. And now, as I did in the other one, I will shade under that curve, again, with this left-hand boundary, upper boundary, right bound, uh, lower boundary, but no boundary to the right. There is that shaded area. Now, the purpose of this video, the main purpose, is to compare these two areas. As we've seen, they have quite a bit in common. They have, uh, as their left boundary, the vertical line at 1. Upper boundary is the curve itself. Lower boundary, the x-axis, but no right boundary. They both go indefinitely to the right. But now I'm going to make two statements, one about each curve, that are very different from each other. This curve, with graph y equals 1 over x, this area is sufficiently large to cover the surface of the Earth a billion, billion times. This other area, under the graph y equals 1 over x squared, is not large enough to cover these two squares. What a contrast. Your challenge is to prove that I am correct. To meet that challenge successfully, you do not have to know advanced math. You do need to know, probably, that the area of a rectangle is length times width, and you probably also need to know how to add fractions. Other than that, I don't see you're needing advanced math to meet the challenge. If you do meet the challenge and think you did so successfully, I would like to know about it. Would you please go to my profile page, click on Send Message, and send me a uh, your thoughts in a message. If I like what you send me and agree with you, you will be eligible for a prize. As in my other math videos, I play the piano as is evident from my music videos. You can have as a prize an audio file of me playing a piano selection for you. If you need help deciding whether you want a prize, you can click on the link below this video and watch and listen to one or more of my piano videos. If you do want the prize, you will need to include your email address. In any event, I hope that watching this video has given you some pleasure and that if you work on the challenge, it will give you pleasure also. Thank you for watching this video.